There's a bunch of stuff I want to cover today from people who I would say are definitely fitting under the degenerate label. They're up to some activity and some of them are degenerates who have returned from the grave. People who got in drama, they were, you know, maybe they got arrested, they went to jail, they left for a while and then they came back or they're trying to rebrand and um, we're going to be discussing it. <laughs> You guys know who Jinbop is? This is Jinbop. Let me know if you guys know who this guy is, if you remember this YouTuber. He wasn't super popular back in the day, but he did have an audience of about 300,000 subscribers. There's someone who, as far as my audience goes, you can either be a little too old or a little uh, too young to remember Jinbop. But if you were watching a lot of Minecraft YouTube, and I do mean a lot because he was sort of down the totem pole in 2012. If you're watching a lot of Minecraft YouTube back then, then you probably know who Jinbop is. Jinbop is someone who had a decent sized audience of about 300,000 subscribers. And his audience came because he was a childhood friend of Sky Does Minecraft, actually. Sky Does Minecraft obviously being, you know, like the most popular Minecraft YouTuber maybe of all time before dream right he was he was huge he was huge i know he's had his own whole drama with his wife or whatever his kids allegations of abuse i'm not going to get into that it's not really my i don't know prerogative i don't know what happened there go look it up on your own time i'm sure jay aubrey did a video about it that's probably pretty good actually i know he did a video about it i think i remember liking it uh anyway here's a video 10k sub special how i met scott is minecraft this is from eight years ago october 5th 2014 hey what's popping jen bop here coming to you guys today with a video that's not really about gaming this time around and i actually wanted at some point point to pursue a singing career in Korea. Uh, Auditioned for two companies, didn't work out, whatever. I was pretty much ready just to, you know, buckle down and study for a normal job. But then one of my friends from high school said, hey, I have a friend named Adam and he says he knows who you are. And I go, I haven't known an Adam since I was in elementary school. And they go, yeah, that's the one. Imagine my surprise to find out that my old friend from elementary school was now like a big YouTuber with over 10 million subscribers. It was certainly a shock to me. So as we can see here, Jin Bob was a childhood friend of Sky Does Minecraft. Just like coincidentally, they were friends like back in like, you know, seventh and eighth grade. And then they don't talk for a while, you know, as, as friends often, you know, the friendships fall apart and they reconnect eventually and they become good pals. Sky shouts him out. As we can see, there's, there's, there's comments praising, praising Sky or Adam for what he did. I like how Adam is the kind of guy that didn't forget about his friends once he got famous. OMG, I feel so happy for Jin, how he became friends with Sky, and I feel bad you guys lost contact for 10 years. Am I the only one bawling my eyes out? And Jinbop was, you know, he was pretty popular um, at the time. He wasn't, you know, super, super duper popular, but he was he was big. I mean, Ladies 300k and... subs. He's lost a lot of subscribers for reasons we'll talk about in a moment. But at the time, he had a decent sized channel. You know, he did kind of standard gaming videos, Grand Theft Auto. Is this Yandere Simulator? A lot of videos about that. He did videos with Sky. Hey, what's poppin'? Jinbop here. Can I say with a I'm final bout of Mortal Kombat X today, I'm going to be facing off against Adam Sky himself adam how are you my friend uh i'm scared because i see you playing this like everyday training so kind of just standard gaming content for around uh 2015 2014. so what happened to jin bob where did he go i mean if we go to his channel we see he hasn't uploaded in six years one whale of a time and the comments are filled with people really criticizing him people are trashing him they're going after him they're, they're referencing prison break so what what is this about well i've talked about this in a video i did called the minecraft degenerates jin bob got himself into some controversy if you look him up on youtube now it's minecraft's creepiest youtube YouTuber that no one talks about. He's got like, like it looks like he's in like a mugshot photo here. Jinbop got let out. What happened to Jinbop? There's my video, the Minecraft Degenerates, and I talked about him in there. So what happened with Jinbop? What's the deal with him? Scott is Minecraft actually talked about him on stream and he referenced some allegations about him and the fact that he apparently got arrested. This is an old live stream Sky did, I think on Instagram, where he just kind of talked about stuff. The only things I know about the entire situation is that he was arrested for some pretty f up sh uh, this is where I'm about to get controversial. <clears throat> I never thought Jin was that bad of a guy when I knew him. So this is just him saying, like, when he knew him, he liked him. I don't know why he's saying this now. Like, it's a hot take. Like, when you knew him, you had positive interactions with him, and then he got arrested, so he's probably a bad dude now. I don't know. Whatever. Adam's kind of a weird dude. Moving on from that, he says he got arrested. Well, what did he get arrested for? Well, we've got this Kotaku article from 2016. Federal investigators arrested popular YouTuber Starlet Jinbob Zhao last month for allegedly engaging in sexually predatory behavior toward a 15-year-old female fan of his channel. In news of Zhao's arrest. The news of Zhao's arrest first spread over the weekend through a YouTube news channel, and he remains in custody today. The YouTube choose the YouTube news channel they're referencing is scarce, by the way. Zhao's YouTube channel, popular among young teens, features him playing a variety of games including Minecraft and Inside. According to an affidavit sent to Kotaku by the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Eastern District of Michigan, where Zhao was in custody, he allegedly engaged in illicit online behavior with a minor over the course of several months this year. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What did he do? He engaged in illicit behavior with a minor? Guys, what's going on here? Tonight, an inside look at Tourette's Syndrome. I'm Chris Hansen. 
Why don't you have a seat? What's going on here? What exactly happened? An FBI representative told Kotaku that Zhao was arrested at the Detroit Metro Airport, where he was allegedly on his way to meet the fan. Zhao was nine years her senior. So when she was 15, he was 24. He was 24 years old. What the f***? Obviously pretty messed up, right? Obviously not n not a cool age gap. This is beyond just like weird stuff. This is actual hell territory. The guy is a pile. This doesn't call me Carson tier stuff, okay? In an interview, Zhao's lawyer stressed that his client is presumed innocent until proven guilty. And that the federal complaint doesn't give all the information. He declined to elaborate further. Zhao was accused of producing and receiving child pornography, as well as enticing a minor and traveling with intent to engage in illicit sexual activity. A court document alleges the defendant acted in a deliberate, sexually predatory manner toward a fan he knew to be a minor, 14 to 15 years old at all times relevant here too, over many months in a manner designed to groom her to participate in the production of CP and further to participate in direct sexual activity with the defendant. Noting that the defendant's work involves creating content for YouTube with 10 to 14 year old children is the intended audience, with this serving as a possible entre uh, entry entry or entree? I think entry into communication with minors. Pretty disturbing guy, okay? Pretty disturbing guy. Actual as I said. Not uh, not one of these like borderline situations, like terrible person. The alleged victim has created graphics and voiceovers for Zhao's YouTube channel, which boasts 400,000 subscribers and is popular with young young teens. Earlier this year, when the fan was 14, her parents allegedly grew concerned about her Skype calls with Zhao. When she started wearing a locket with his picture around her neck and purchasing lingerie she would not typically wear, her parents began monitoring her time online, according to the affidavit. Last Friday, YouTube news personality Scarce broke the story of Zhao's alleged predatory behavior in relation to a video. We confirmed Scarce's report with the Eastern Michigan District Attorney's Office. So Scarce reported it, they see it, they talk about it, and they, you know, they get the details on it. He gets arrested, and he actually gets sentenced, okay? He ends up going to jail. Uh, I believe that the, the sentence because it was in 2016. I believe it was for eight years, I believe is how long he was supposed to go away. Seven or eight years. So he goes away for a while. People talk about him. I talked about him in my video, The Minecraft Degenerates. If we go to it, we'll find the segment. Yeah, here we go. By looking at his profile on the Federal Bureau of Prisons, he was released on June 2nd, 2022. So as we can see here, he was released from prison back then, and he actually came back. He's not hes not gone. You'd think someone like this would just dip and not be a repeat offender or anything like that. They wouldn't be, you know, involved in the online community after this because, you know, when you're guilty, why would you return to, you know, your same stopping grounds? But as we've learned, criminals typically return to the scene of the crime and even the girl associated with that crime. I don't think this is stuff anyone's talked about yet. I got the sent to me on Instagram. What I was sent was convincing unless all the screenshots are fake, but I think it's real. I think they're all real. We're gonna start with this Reddit post. Jin Bop has been released from prison. Twitter warning, or sorry, trigger warning. I assume it's Twitter warning. Hashtag YouTube community PSA. Starlet Zhao at Jin Bob Gaming. Did I say Zhao? Zhao at Jin Bob Gaming was released recently from prison. We see here he is, Starlet Zhao, age 29. Race is Asian, sex is male. He was released on June 2nd, 2022. See his register number there. He was released. The Reddit comments say, I want to believe people can change, but due to the nature of the crime and fact that there is no proper societal support or treatment or anything, I'll forever be weary of people like him. Hope he doesn't do something like that again and has changed, but he's obviously lost everything YouTube-wise and I hope it stays that way for the better because he used his status to get what he wanted. And this is absolutely correct. When one of these people get out of prison, you know, you got to be wary of them reoffending. obviously. You know, you can't forget what they did. I have reason to believe he's still in contact with that girl to this day. I'm going to preface this by saying that you probably shouldn't reach out to any of the people involved. The reason why is because the girl is no longer a minor. She's an adult. So I think technically there's nothing illegal going on, you know, given that they're talking now. It's still f***ed up, but I don't think that anything good would come from harassing her, or harassing him, anything like that. So try to avoid that. So here's the drive document. We'll start with the evidence. This is sent to me by someone. I don't think they want me to read it out. Other than it constituting as grooming by definition, there's nothing wrong legally, which is unfortunate. Well, it is grooming by definition what he did back then, but given that she's now 21, I don't think there's anything illegal going on. It was illegal back then. I don't think you could charge him now for being in a relationship with the same person because she's a legal adult now, as far as I'm aware. So here's this account. It's called Zinimation. It's a furry on Twitter. You see his little sketch there, his little blue wolf fox thing. You see creator, animation, cartoons, and music. I have a cat. She stinks. This obviously reflects his previous interest in music. We'll read some tweets. On August 19th, 2022, he tweeted, kind of late to the party, but Bell is kind of totally amazing. Beauty and the Beast with Ready Player One flavor through the lens of Ghibli. It bothers me that potato peelers and razors are functionally the same. Just boring tweets, boring bull You know, nothing you would think would be super, super whack. Here's the Steam account associated. Their current name is Zin. But if you look through their name history, which you can see on Steam, you can see their previous name was Jinbop. If we go down here, we can see that one of their friends is Ant Venom. I doubt Ant Venom talks to him to this day. I assume Ant Venom just had him added from back in the day when, when Ant Venom... For those of you guys who don't know, Ant Venom is like one of the big YouTubers who was friends with Sky back then. You know, so it would make sense that he would have had him added on Steam because they probably played games for a video at some point, right? 
His Twitter was made the same month and year that he got released. This is his account. Joined June 2022. We can see here he was released early June 2022, so he would have had plenty of time to make a new Twitter account. There's no activity on this same Steam account that used to be called Jin Bop and is now called Zin uh, from the 2015 to June 2022. And if we look at the logs here, we can see they're American. They're a Steam member since 2005, which would make sense because he's an older guy, so we'd probably have a Steam account since then. And if we look at the date that the name was changed, uh, the name Jin Bop was made on the 1st of February 2015 from two feels for me previously and seven years later on the 14th of june 2022 at 7 59 p.m it's late at night i guess i don't know he's he's missing playing video games or something changes his name to gin bop uh we can see on the 14th of june 2022 changes his name to her fox boy and obviously this is still reflective of you know the fox going on here right related to their relationship furry yeah i know super uncommon uh proof that she is the same person let's take a look at this first of all she sent him fan art this is a link to my video where i referenced the articles and the scarce video of her basically uh he received fan art from her and that's how they became friends initially and then he groomed her we can see this is her account this says the best art at gin bop gaming and this is from november 18th 2015 which is i believe around the time they met here's another piece of art she did voiceovers for him as well and we can see her here saying i did voice acting for jim bob not too long ago i might be able to help here we can see that they were texting this is from 2016 this is her her tweeting this out i believe this is after her after his arrest this guy says wait he can text you she says no that's old this is happy birthday art i believe while he was in prison this is art of them kissing i guess more art here this is a i believe a knife at jim bob gaming bought this just so he could name it after me and if that isn't true love i don't know what is he had true love buying someone a CSGO knife. He says, I'll never stop loving him. This is from 2016 with the two here. And those who think that they support me, tell me that I shouldn't feel bad for him. My grades are failing. I have no motivation. I rarely sleep, rarely eat. He's suicidal. I don't have support from my parents. Yeah, he probably should be suicidal because he's a file. I don't know what to do. I knew he was a YouTuber, but we met through a mutual friend. I'm tired of people thinking he used YouTube to get to me. I know he regrets his decisions. I know he would never want to hurt me or anyone else. I know if he could, he'd, pro he'd profusely apologize. It was just a mistake. A mistake is something that happened happens on a whim once. What he did is not a mistake. What he did is systematic, intentional grooming. I mean, I think that's obvious. That's why he went to jail, right? That's why he went to jail. We have a twit longer from her from 2016. The only reason I'm barely pushing through all of this is because I'm in a relationship, but here's the thing. He and I share something in common. We both lost the people we fell in love with, and we'd rather die than try to move on. His story is so much worse than mine. I still have a chance at being there for Jin, so my friend's story, blah, 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 blah. Here's the proof that they're together now. We can see in, on his account, I have a cat. She stinks. Here's the same account from back then, his stinky cat. They're obviously together, right? You can see her account is from 2014. It's the same exact account from back then. Me and my boyfriend, Sonas. Here's their fur affinity stuff. This is the same fox. Just wanted to design his persona with him and draw our personas kissing and get fursuits together and be cute at conventions. So, uh, yeah. Jinbop is back. He's in a relationship with the same girl, apparently. Obviously, he groomed her, and now she has some kind of, like, Stockholm Syndrome. I don't want to speculate too much on if that's even the real psychological diagnosis. It's just, you know, colloquially, that's what I would call it. You know, she's she's with a person who was a and groomed her. She is of age now, so I don't think that, um, you know, obviously it's f***ed up, but considering that she's 21 years old, I mean, she's a legal adult for all purposes now. What happened back then is illegal, but he went to jail for, like, six, seven years, and now he's out, and now they're together again. I got this sent to me. Uh, by a fan. They wanted me to review this. Bring it to light a little bit. I considered like tweeting at Jinbop or like messaging him on Steam to be like, is that you? And then seeing what happened. But I figured he would have uh, gotten rid of all this if I did that. And he also hasn't tweeted in a bit. She's currently like tweeting about missing him. So he got away with it. He got away with it. And that's a, a theme we're going to see today. People getting away with it. <laughs> Disgusting pieces of <laughs> I guess if you want to see the story more in depth, you can watch my video, The Minecraft Degenerates, where I explained it more. You can see the, you know, the PDF here. Maybe I'll release this if enough people want to, want to see it or people want to make more videos about it. It's pretty definitive to me that this is him. This is him, right? Same guy. Oh, goes to jail for seven years, gets out, and gets back with his grooming victim. That's the story, as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to message the guy that sent this to me and ask if I can just release it point blank. Usually, child grooming doesn't extend longer than, like, um, especially if it's one one victim, it doesn't extend larger like longer than, like, five, six, seven years at most. Like, that's what almost he got. He got six years. Chances are, if he was involved in, like, some huge rape where he was selling CP, he would have gone for like, you know, 15, 20 years. But even then, it's rare that I think they'll get a life sentence for something like that. The law is pretty lenient towards these types of people, unfortunately. But in this case, I mean, the justice system didn't fail anyone. I mean, they put him in jail for, you know, a pretty, a, you know, I think, I don't know if he got the maximum penalty, but he got a decent one. Unfortunately, they did let him out due to good behavior, which obviously I would disagree with. I think he should be in jail for a lot longer. But um, the justice system didn't fail. I mean, they got him, you know, arrested, went to trial, went to jail. At this point, it's his own actions that just perpetuate this kind of bad thing so that's our first degenerate of the day jinbop he's back carol the wolf you guys know who carol the wolf is 
You probably do. One of my more popular videos on my channel from the last year or so. Pretty infamous name. Pretty infamous name, Kira the Wolf. <sighs> Kira's back. Kira's actually back. They have rebranded. So I figured today it would be important to just go over the evidence against them and the fact that they clearly are a degenerate zoo sadist, zoophile dog. To remind people a little bit of what they did and then show the fact that they're trying to rebrand because this is the thing that a lot of these people do Jinbop tried to rebrand change his image go about his day carol the wolf he has basically ignored a lot of this now and is trying to rebrand carol the wolf is also also never went to jail nothing ever happened with that legally this is one of the more disturbing videos i've done the the carol the wolf thing i didn't even go into all of it but there's a lot to talk about with carol the wolf let's get into it carol the wolf back in the day four or five years ago was one of the most popular pop you furs which basically just means popular furry youtuber right popular furry personality here's a just like a typical kind of meme video they did. 160,000 views. At their peak, they had more than 100,000 subscribers. I believe 120,000. They've definitely lost some now. Here's just a video they did collabing with Majira Strawberry and Mark Husky. Two other popular pop you furs, you would say. The following preview is better proof for all audiences. I said it's it's that. Oh my god. Oh god, dick. So here they are sitting in the top bottom left corner. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I know you on the far right. I know you. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you don't. <laughs> so, I mean, it's just cancer, okay? It's f***ing cancer. It's the same furry cancer you would expect, but there's no indication at the time that Kira was anything other than cringe, okay? You can call furries cringe all you want, but not all of them are f***ing files. Not all of them are zoo files. It is a, you know, problem in the community. There's probably... I'd say a lot more um, of those types of people in the furry community than any other. Not all furries are that way. A lot of them are innocent, just like weirdos. You know, cringe is the most you could say at the time. And because of this, Shane Dawson ended up doing a collab with Kira the Wolf. Like what kind of where he shouted out Kiro. I believe at the time Kiro had maybe 15,000 subs. And Shane's video on his channel with millions of subscribers got him to 100k. Shane Dawson specifically wanted to look at the furry community, understand them a little bit. He seemed to be like, oh, maybe I'm a furry too. Maybe I'm a gay furry. He basically just like talked to Kiro, make Kiro seem likable to a mass audience, right? And I don't think Shane knew what he was getting into at the time. I know there's a lot of criticisms to be made of Shane. I, I don't think that Shane knew that the, the f***ing fest he was getting into when this was made. Made you want to turn into this. Okay, so that's a fun one. Uh, one day I was just scrolling online. Uh, I loved werewolves. I was into the whole werewolf thing, you know, grr and stuff. <laughs> but um, I was looking for a werewolf wallpaper for my computer, and these like fur suits showed up. I'm like, oh my god! And I clicked on it. I set it as my wallpaper for like a week, and then my friend pointed out, I'm like, you're like furries. I'm like, well, what's a furry? Holy crap! So I looked it up and. I got dragged right into it. <laughs> So, you know, it's it's cringe because it's a furry, but just kind of some standard YouTube content, not that big of a deal. Video does well. Kira the Wolf gets a big shout out. It's a huge deal for the furry community at the time. Um, they praise Shane Dawson for, you know, shedding light on their community and, you know, portraying it in a more positive light because a lot of the time furries get a bad rap in the media. Uh, Kira, ran to, Kira, sorry, ended up reacting to it. We can see the video in the old YouTube layout from back then. This reaction is from June 10th, around the time the video came out in 2017. Okay, so that video, I was just moving out of my dorms. And I, I was moving, I just wanted to give an update. Uh, so this was basically, hey, ask me questions, I'm moving out, I'll be in a new apartment, I want to do a Q&A because I hate so just kind of boring furry content. In the video with Shane itself, Carol specifically says, it's not a sexual thing. There are some people who are into that, but it's not a sexual thing for me. The fursuits are not sexual. I'm just a gay guy who has fun making these videos, okay? I'm just a normal normal dude, nothing wrong with me. And people took took his word for it, because why wouldn't they? Well, unfortunately, we have some trouble in furry paradise. This is a Mr. Mediker video. This is a compilation of all his videos about this. 19th of September, 2018. Content warning. Zoophilia, animal abuse, pedophilia. This is from an account called Mordecai, another fellow furry venus is a bun on twitter at kiro the wolf is a part of a circle of furries who participate in not only zoophilia but also necrophilia animal torture and discussion of pedophilia here's the evidence there are many but i'll focus on him so pretty up here's some more at it's brenda banks is talking about the allegations here kiro was straight up posting videos again like nothing happened that patreon only video from last week is public his twitter is filled with hey welcome back ass pats kiro the wolf his dog to death. Do not let this go away until he's brought to justice. How to become a meme. This is the video in question. People saying they're glad to see Kiro back. Here's some of the DMs that are important. Kiro the Wolf says, and yeah, his throat is nice too. I sent a video in the group of him. Snake thing. 
who was later arrested, I believe, says, I don't remember. XD, nuzzles. Damn, memory sucks. Kira the wolf says, hmm, I can find it. Snake Thing says, okay, with a heart. Kiro sends a video, and then Kiro sends a picture of their dog with their maw open. You okay, hun? Kiro says, no, not really. I just got the news that my dog is dying of kidney failure. Snake Thing says, aw, my deepest condolences, hun. I know it isn't much, especially right now, but I'm here for you. I'm sorry. Holds on to tightly. Kiro says, thank you. I left the group because it reminded me of the stuff I did to him. Did to him being animal abuse. Specifically, f the dog, by the way. Now that he's dying, I can't believe I did that to him. I can't be part of that group any longer. I love him so much when he meets me, I can't be there. I'm almost two states away. And these messages are from the exact same time that Kiro publicly was talking about his dog having an illness and dying. And that's just one piece of evidence, by the way. Kiro would say that he was hacked, but there's so much... Like, it's, it's impossible that this is not Kiro. Kiro was saying, oh, I was hacked. Oh, it wasn't me. Someone's impersonating me. It's so obvious that it's him. It's so obvious he's a dog or piece of Here we have them talking more about animal abuse stuff. Kiro says, oh, okay, I won't share it, but ah, I need dog ass and throat. The thing about all the Kiro stuff is a zoo file leaked it. Literally not a single person who hates furries would defend zoophilia as a concept and exposing other zoo files, even as a cover. And if it's not someone who hates furries, there's no reason to make this all up. So this person's name, named Zoodonim. This person is a zoo file themselves who exposed a bunch of other people in the zoo file community in these telegram chat groups because they believed that zoophilia is okay, but zoo sadism, which is harming animals as well, like not just, you know, ripping them, but also like maiming them, torturing them. They believed that was where they drew the line. Click this. No more covering for these people. These are not what zoo files are. I'm sorry if people hate me for this or feel betrayed, but I don't care. Half of these people talk to me and use my chats to meet others. F you. If this community took out its own trash, you wouldn't have this shit happen. So good on you. The bottom line is this. There are way too many of you covering for your friends who are into slash sharing slash participating slash let alone creating content such as this. This is not acceptable. You want to be accepted by society? Grow up. Note, this is not a call for a witch hunt. They deserve to be a lot worse than witch hunted. Zoo is illegal. And if that's what zoo is, good, it should be. Blah, 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 explaining their own intentions with this, right? This content was compiled by the now defunct Zoodonym, and Zoodonym is the person who is from this group chat who I was just showing is a zoo file who is exposing their own friends. A few things before I start posting. I don't know who any of these individuals are. These screenshots date back literal years. I don't know who Zoodonym is. So we're going to go through some screenshots now to just explain more about this. Let's see this one. Yeah, this is where they're just talking about their intentions again. Here's Kiro's messages themselves. Which we'll go out. through. Sorry for not responding last night. I passed out, but yeah, I'm okay with necro stuff if it's not that bloody. But I'm totally against killing for sex. I only do it with roadkill. What's the big deal, guys? It's just roadkill. It's just roadkill. Come on. It's just f***ing a dead dog you find in the street. What's the big deal? Ooh, cub. I always love puppy butt. So he's a furry file as well. Awesome. Snake thing says same. Kiro the wolf says I need some puppy booty. Snake thing says same with a heart. Let's go grab ourselves a real cub and an animal. Let's make some rare. Referring to uh, fucking a puppy. Kira the Wolf says, I'm okay with humping a four month old. Kira the Wolf says, It is. I've played with two pups so far. So confessing to abusing puppies. Kira the Wolf says, Oh, XC, they were just my dogs growing up. I only fingered their throats and put my pinky up their butts. So this person did the due diligence of going through a lot of the materials that were leaked and going through basically what happened. I believe Snake Thing's in jail for being a file. Video four A small dog is anally and orally. Video five, a puppy is drugged and strapped to a log. It is anally and vaginally with the wide end of a baseball bat. Jesus Christ. Until blood is visible on the bat. The dog begins to visibly spasm. Please get this disgusting human being out of our streets and away from any defenseless creature. I cannot express enough how disturbing and disgusting this content is. This is not who we are. And the poor souls that suffer did not deserve this. We can't let it happen again. Update part two. Not all of the suitors in the videos are Kiro. I was mistaken. But the deer video is confirmed Kiro. And this is where Kiro talks about, or sorry, Kiro filmed themselves having sex with a roadkill deer. I won't link the videos as they're too disturbing and frankly I could go to jail for distributing content. I'm done watching videos like these as they unnerve me greatly but I'll report on the findings of others. I hope you can forgive me. Kiro's explanation for all these messages where there was like literally a hundred links between this fake Kiro, fake Kiro, okay, and the real Kiro was that they were hacked. That was his explanation. For reason drama, before you go believing these rumors about me, know the facts. My account was hacked. I would never do any of these things. These are faked conversations. All of this is someone trying to get attention. They're called trolls. Kiro had this whole fake lie about a VPN. You can look into it more in my video, as I said. I, I detailed it all, like, a lot better there. But they had this whole lie with a VPN where people figured out that they were using a VPN to disguise that someone else was, like, accessing their account from, like, Iran or something. This is DMs of Kiro talking about, we already read these, his dog dying. And here's a thread showing more ties to the fact that it was Kiro by Aliyah on Twitter. Hashtag Kiro was over party. Kiro the wolf's dog, Koda, magically has the same fur, dentals, and tongue, as well as a hand with the same skin tone next to it in the zoophile. Some more evidence. Kiro was obviously publicly into maws and vor. And the last one, it depicts an image of what I assume to be an animal throat. It's vor, so it's of sexual nature. He is into threats, threats and maws, oh, throats, throats and maws and real life throats and maws. He also says Drago is hot, which is not a very human dragon, is it? Drago from the show Bakugan is hot. Don't judge me. 
Here are the veins showing that they're the same on the hand. This is an animal abuse video. This is just a Kiro picture. The image isn't anywhere else on the internet and is accompanied by two other images. These are not casual pet owner images. You can also see that lip spot people love talking about isn't visible in the closed mouth pictures either. The angle we view the gums at in the open mouth picture stretches the lips and reveals what usually can't be seen. However, the lip spot is slightly visible in this picture. You can see that his back end is beige like in the other pictures. Also, the pictures of his dog and the lookalike are in the same resolution with the same dimensions. In the screenshots he provides to prove he was hacked, one shows artifacting, which y'all like to say means Photoshop and is very low quality. Plus, they aren't even from the same phone and the screen slash widths are different sizes. He's lying about being hacked. You can see they're different from observing the black bar at the bottom. The Sizes and icons are different and they look different too. They're from different phones. Kiro has a pixel. Why is there a different phone shown? So there's just so much evidence that this is the guy, okay? It's obviously the same person. We'll go through a few more things. Here's their Beast Forum account. Beast Forum is a site specifically for bestialists or dog. Just their profile. Birthday is 19th of May, 1994, which is coincidentally Kiro's birthday. Here's a post they made. I'm moving there soon and I was wondering if I could meet some new buddies when I move there. Throw me a message or comment below if you're interested in meeting. Would love to ha have more zoo friends. This is at the same time that Kiro moved to, co to go to college in Oakdale, Pennsylvania, which is by Pittsburgh. DeviantArt post. This is a post of their dog, my puppy oh so long ago. Picture of their puppy. And this is from 2012. This is the same puppy that they would describe abusing. Uh, the puppy would later grow up and die of an illness and Kiro would discuss uh, their remorse over abusing the dog. Kiro's a dog f***er. They're a zoo file. They're a zoo sadist. They like f***ing roadkill. There's no doubt about it. And they're friends. If you can believe it, Kiro wasn't even the worse. Their friends are way f***ing worse. There was a guy in Cuba who would create puppy torture videos using like a steak with fire ants on it and putting it inside of dogs. There's so much f***ed up I could get into more. As I said, I already did a video about this. I just wanted to recap a little bit of it. I did a whole 50 minute long video about this if you want to see more details. There's so much. There's so much. So Kiro is clearly a disgusting person. There's no doubt about that. But Kiro is now back on YouTube. They were never arrested or anything. Nothing came of it. The police did search their sh but I believe due to like statute of limitations, nothing could come of it. Currently, Kiro is back on YouTube making videos. Now as a VTuber, the future of my channel. Been trying to find a purpose for my channel in the last few months, and now I found one. This is from January 3rd, 2023, so a little over a month ago. And let's see what Kiro did. Oh, hi. Hi, guys, and welcome to a new video. I know it's been a while. I've been trying to do... If you're familiar with Kiro, their voice probably sounds different. It's because they're using a voice changer. And now they're attempting to become like a, a, a sort of mainstream VTuber e-celeb. They've rebranded their name to Radiance Wolf instead of Kira the Wolf, but this is the same the same channel, obviously. I feel like we do more dividing because we want to feel better. When in reality, it just turns into bullying. So my new channel name will be Radiance because I want to show people that no matter how much hate, no matter how much lies or rumors there are, I'll still continue to shine. The more light that's emitted, the more that the shadows melt away. So they know they got away with it and they like flaunt it in their face constantly by being like, oh, the lies about me, the mistruths. It's all going to melt away, guys. It's all going to melt away. They know what they did. They know they're an evil person. They know they're f***ed up and they, they don't feel bad for it, clearly, because they they, they, they do this smug shit, right? Here's a thread about it on Twitter. Kira was back on YouTube. He changed his name and is using a voice changer. Here we have the screenshot of Radiance Wolf. So Kira was gone. Kira was a part of this channel. Always will be. The channel just has a new name and different content now. Glad to see you. Also, your voice is a bit different. Thank you. And yeah, I've always loved voice changers, so I thought it would be a fun twist for the channel. Here we have a video this person made. They linked about it. Howdy, herd. And hello, everybody else. I wasn't going to cover this in a video originally because I know there are a lot of other people in my community that will likely cover it and way better than I would. But while they work on those, I think I should warn some people. Kiro is back. Again. So the VTubers are hitting on them. They're ousting them from their community. I don't think Kiro has posted anything since this video a month ago, but it got 20,000 views, which is not, I mean, it's not nothing, you know? Oops, I forgot this existed. Hello, internet. New big video coming in a week or two. Big things are happening. I'm excited. They're also still on Twitter with 13,000 followers where they still tweet. They have replies off, but they clearly reference who they are. They make like story time videos now. And, um, you know, the title of my video is Kira the Wolf Got Away With It. And it seems like at least for now, Kira the Wolf will continue to get away with it. Hi guys, it's been a while. And what's this? I look different? Uh, I do. So, my fursuit's still in a box somewhere. I recently moved to West Virginia and- How are you gonna make, like, terrible, cringe, disgusting content and be a f***ing zoophile file? What the f*** is wrong with you? How do you do both? How do you- how do you accomplish both? I really don't understand. So yeah, that's the deal with Kiro. They're still around, they got away with it. Another degenerate that, uh, is getting back to their old ways. I wouldn't be surprised if he was a f***ing dog right now watching this stream. Everything sucks.
Sakura's back. They're roaming free, unhindered, probably abusing dogs as they please. Which brings us to the next person I want to talk about. Someone I've never talked about on my channel. I am doing a main channel video soon about them. Their name is Quantum Kitty. Uh, they're a pretty interesting person. Also a furry, if you couldn't tell by the name. Also a zoophile. Also a freak of nature. And um, someone who's been getting covered more on Kiwi Farms lately. Someone who's been getting covered a lot more on Kiwi Farms for good reason. Because they actually recently were criminally charged. Yeah, he was charged with animal cruelty. Four counts, I believe. And stalking, I think they were charged with as well. With all the, all the, all the degenerate furries, Kiwi Farms usually does a good job covering the lore um and this is no exception so credit to to those who wrote the thread in this case obviously they did a great job with it as always a lot of good info there here's the kiwi farms thread zusadist sean kitty of quantum quantum kitty quantum leapeed 2000 quantum kitty is a zoophile activist who's a contributor to the zooier than thou podcast and good friends with his members including toggle the rat quantum had been subject of interests of mine for about two weeks now but got sidetracked with other projects of mine that was until toggle was doxxed and in response quantum freaked out locked his account briefly and deleted about 50 to 100 or so tweets as far as i remember just about two days ago in an attempt to knock at dox so i decided to look into the little freak as he clearly doesn't want it to be the next to found out prior to posting this thread i did make sure to contact the proper authorities about what he does and what he's up to although besides talking about animals and being friends with people who engage in the practice there's no solid evidence proving your animals himself that i could find this was at the time by the way he's since been charged officially and uh suppose Supposedly, there's an FBI investigation to one of his associates, Tim Wynn. Actually, does he know Tim Wynn? That's another story. Another degenerate we're talking about today. I'm getting them confused a little bit. They probably roll in the same circles. There's no solid evidence proving he ripped animals himself that I could find. That being said, the guy did incessantly defend animals all the time. So make of that what you will. Here we've got his Twitter account, Kitty of Quantum. 20s, male, bisexual, U.S. Marine, professional cat in a box, zoophile, literally in their, in their bio. Miners, get the f out. Guys, they'll f dogs, but not kids, okay? They'll f cats, but not kids. And um, for those of you guys who don't know, he's a member of the Zooier Than Thou podcast. Do you guys know what the Zooier Than, the Zooier Than Thou podcast is? I've talked about it a few times in videos. It's uh, it's pretty f***ed up. The Zooier Than Thou podcast has been also covered by Toad McKinley extensively. He made great videos about it. Zooier Than Thou is a podcast <laughs> dedicated to discussing animal abuse. It's been on YouTube for quite a while. They basically do videos just talking about being an animal. They justify it, they share their experiences, they promote it, and they treat it like it's a super like casual just like fine thing to do we'll go to the popular start with the most popular native americans in the zoo community i fought the law the hosts you can see have changed a few times we'll get into that in a second but one of the hosts for a while was quantum kitty as far as i know at least they've appeared on the podcast. Quantum Kitty also is so bold that they do lectures about zoophilia. Presentation, sexual ethics, zoophilia, necrophilia, necrophilia three. This is on their YouTube account. People started taking notice of them and decided to dig into them a little bit. One YouTuber you guys probably know if you if you are, are part of the sort of like drama community is Coyote Lovely. Coyote Lovely is a furry, but as far as I know, one of the good ones, as they say. He's done a lot of videos about people like this. They did a video about Cord Kitty. They did a video about Hypnotist Sappho. They've done videos about a lot of people. And one of the people they did a video about is quantum kid themselves sean i can tell you exactly how i know it was you it was the dms you leaked the docs posted my kink but never cited any evidence no evidence to that effect was released until you there's a podcast they've done uh where they admitted to sending sexual content to minors basically a zoophilia video i believe of someone engaging in sex with a cat speaking of the schrodinger thing now this is just something i saw on twitter um, mm -hmm. it, I, it was referred to Schrodinger, so I suppose that must have been you. Um, it showed one of the Schrodinger accounts actually sending, mm -hmm. uh, well, not a cat or an animal of sorts being, vi uh, well, violated, having sexual intercourse or about to have sexual intercourse with a human with the tagline, how does this not look like consent or something along those lines. Sends a video of a cat having sex with a human, captions it, how does this not look like consent? Guys, I think we need a total shutdown on Quantum Kitty until we can figure out what the f*** is going on, okay? And I believe they sent it to someone they were arguing with. They'll explain it in this clip. They sent it to someone they were arguing with about, like, justifying zoophilia. And their justification was, look at this video of someone f***ing a cat. How does this not look like consent? Was that you? Yes, that was me. And that was, um, taken terribly out of context. Um, so I'll give you the context of what the whole situation behind that was. Um... The person I sent that to was someone I was arguing with about zoophilia. Mm. And we had, you know, a good span of, you know, DMs before that. This wasn't just some person I saw on Twitter opened up the DMs and sent them dog. Um, this was someone I was having a debate with. And, of course, they were making, you know. Because they were having a debate. They were having a debate. That's why they sent the zoophilia 
They were debating them. You know that moment when you're in a heated online debate, okay? Your destiny, your Vosh. I can make that joke, but Vosh might actually do something like that. <laughs> Just kidding, meta irony. You know when you're in an online debate, a heated online debate, and you send someone animal That feel when? That feel when you send someone animal for a debate? The argument, animals can't consent. They don't want to do it. It's all And I found this specific video um, where the dog uh, is oh, very dog. clearly and you know engaged in it is very much playing an active part and uh, I saw the video as very good evidence that animals do uh, in fact and you know can enjoy acts with a human and so I sent this video as evidence and I said look at this video this dog is clearly you know enjoying it this this dog is clearly you know into it guys look at the video of someone a dog do you think they like it not only do they always like have a screw loose in the way where they want to animals but they're also like always like the most socially maladjusted people who don't ever know how to hide it they're always like up in this way they're always like what you think it's you think it's not consensual to a dog you think i'm disgusting look at this video of me doing it then they just freaked out um they threw a hissy fit Ew, gross, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Then they, you know, took a screen cap and they threw it out there and just said, this guy is sending me animals without any contacts whatsoever. There's a longer interview for, with Coyote Lovely as well. Um, their um, description of this person says, a snippet from the fun interview Relly and I had with Quantum Kitty on Twitter. For those of you who don't know, Quantum is an open zoo file and overall deranged human being. I felt like this would be an important part of the conversation to make sure it got saved. Here's the allegation about them sending stuff to the miner and then that later you know, went on to be confirmed, obviously. He sent it to miners, including me. The whole reason I created Quantum Crackhead was to get back at him for sending me that disgusting shit. Of course, once that parody gained traction, he mass-reported it. But since the account didn't break TOS, he did not get his way. And recently, he did something that crossed the line too far. He saved and posted a photo of me without my consent. So now, not only did he send me bestiality, he saved a photo of me and posted it as, his, as and posted it as his argument with someone else. He was charged with animal cruelty recently. For those of you guys who don't know, this was on the um, community happenings thread on Kiwi Farms. We zoom in here. We can see what he actually got charged with. One count, oh, sorry, two counts of obscenity and four counts of aggravated animal animal cruelty now uh i believe he was held without bond initially but he actually was let out since then i believe here we go he locked the account upon catching up with this thread as he cannot resist visiting the thread that identified and located him which subsequently helped lead to the position he's in today finally facing the course for his blatant abuse of animals so it's confirmed now that he has abused animals well after some account wiping no more public tiny disease and slightly less i guess he posts this on twitter or whatever he's unlocked under a new handle at valence the deer can i find this guy's twitter account yeah this is them i believe same account, as far as I know. Meanwhile, around Christmas, someone out there finished getting a peace order against him. I wouldn't doubt it to be one of the first he's been harassing who are also in Maryland. After discovering he is an animal abusing piece of shit, they decided the persistent sexual harassment was no longer welcome. The initial filing was made three days after this. I'm not an animal abuser. Twitter was documented here. Quoting is broken, but it has been stated before. All animals, including many deceased ones, were moved from his property well before his arrest. I would suspect they were considered evidence to whatever degree, then became property of the state for valuation and appropriate rehoming. So animals he was abusing have been rehomed, thankfully. Pretty, pretty good, pretty good. He's been released, I believe. He's awaiting trial. He probably will be sentenced, considering that they took the dogs away from him. There seems to be, you know, compelling evidence for the fact that he abuses animals. I'll be doing a, uh, a more in-depth video about it on my main channel. The Turkey Tom team just finished getting that one together in terms of writing, so um, the editing will be commencing pretty soon, probably this week. I'll probably record tomorrow, so look out for that. There'll be more stuff going on. Next person we're going to talk about is Tim Wynn, Timothy George Amoroso. He's an older zoo sadist. He's almost 60 years old. I talked about him in my Care of the Wolf video as one of the worst offenders. He's, he's worse than Caro, if you can believe that. Timothy George Amoroso, Tim Wynn, dog dude. 59-year-old sexual sadist who has tortured, <laughs> murdered, and defiled countless animals over the last 30 years. Also produces zoophile and zoo sadist <laughs> of said subjects matter. There's a great video about him by someone named Archive the Wolf. Archive the Wolf is someone that kind of came out during during the whole um, zoo sadism leaks and made a bunch of great videos about it. I reference them a lot in my video about Kara the Wolf. I'm going to speed up their video and we can just kind of watch it. I'll skip around a little bit. 1.75 times speed. In the fall of 2016, in the small city of Coos Bay, Oregon, a young man by the name Levi Dane Simmons went to the local Motel 6 with a puppy. She was a 12-week-old bully mix. Levi Dane Simmons, I believe, is Snake Thing, for those of you guys who don't know, um, who was in the chat logs with Kara the Wolf. And she had just been adopted. So these people all know each other. They're all connected. Her Craigslist listing. Levi rented a room for the night, took her inside, and proceeded to sexually assault her. The events of that night were the spark that would years later lead to the most explosive expose of animal sexual abuse and torture in internet history. But Levi was not alone that fateful autumn night. 
His meager welfare stipend was not enough to afford a puppy or motel rent, nor did he have a car or driver's license to get from his home in North Bend to Coos Bay. And, more importantly, there was no way he could have captured the multiple angles seen in the pictures and videos of his assault on the young dog. No, Levi had an accomplice. And not just a run-of-the-mill Zusadist, if there is such a thing. This man had been plaguing the Pacific Northwest for nearly half a century, mutilating and killing small animals in ways that rival Wolf in their cruelty and severity. From the cutting dogs open and fucking their entrails while they were still alive and screaming in pain habit that he has developed. Mm -hmm. The 2018 leaks would not be his first experience being caught, either. This is a guy who, like, among the dog and Zusadis was heralded as, like, the worst. Like, even they were like, he's too far. Zooier than now, the podcast who talks about fucking dogs, were like, he's too far because he mutilates them and, like, tortures them, like, Saw style, horror movie style. His twisted acts had been documented multiple times in the zoophile community, and his insatiable sociopathic urges have left him in a Groundhog Day loop of hunting and being hunted for the last 30 years. Dog dude, rainsters, dog lover, dog slot, mate pups, muttling, the names he has used are too many to count. So as we go down this grotesque rabbit hole, let's just call him by his actual name, Tim Amoroso. So you got a little summary there of who he is. There's a whole thread here on Kiwi Farms. He says, 8 to 12 weeks is my attraction. Here we have pictures he posted of animals. The OP of this thread is called H&R Block, which is pretty funny. And uh, recently, Tim Wynn was officially doxxed. Once again, they found his new job. The FBI and probably, you know, the, the police are going to do their work here, hopefully. Really f***ed up situation. Um, it seems like he might actually get his comeuppance a little bit if the FBI is getting involved and there's some kind of investigation to this literal dog torturer. On the ranking of people by, like, severity so far, I don't know how, how bad taste it is to rank them, but this guy is probably the worst I've talked about in this stream, just given his extensive history of abuse. You know, explicit, like, brutal f torture of dogs, like I said, Saw style. Chase. Who is Chase? This is someone who's been talked about on Kiwi Farms a lot recently. I'm probably gonna do a video about him at some point. He's a member of the VTuber community. He's a 40-year-old man, okay? 40-year-old f***ing man. 40-year-old man. 31-year-old fully grown people. <laughs> How old is this guy again? Like 35, 40? <laughs> 30 years old. We got a 30-year-old man calling me f***ing ugly on a goddamn social media website. He's 34! The length time goes for a bit. Listen, I gotta stretch out the unfunny jokes as much as possible. At Chase, real name Joel David Thomas, is a deranged animal abusing Satanist, weeaboo, likely a zoophile, and wannabe negative one view VTuber who participates in Discord gay ops to mass flag pink anime rabbits. So they're talking about here, by the way, is someone with the name of Pippa Pipkin. He has a propensity for making a fool of himself, was doxxed with barely any effort, attempted to pick a fight with us on the forum, and acts like a brain damaged 15 year old despite being middle aged. This is the story. At first glance, he seems to be just your very run of the mill VTuber schizophrenic. The first thing that actually caught him some attention was when he got made fun of by the VTuber Pippa Pipkin on November 22nd, 2022 for being completely insane and breaking 4chan's containment, foreshadowing his later attempts at action against her. She says, been wild. Chase says, that's what happens when you become the darling of edgy 4chaners. Pippa says, 4chan. Chase says, 4channel in your case. Pippa says, are you one of them? He says, yes, we don't forgive you or forget. We are anonymous. What boards do you browse since you've decided to join our collective? Hopefully not just the normal boards like Soch. She says, why'd you do it, Chase? Which shows, I think, him posting that he was interacting with her on Twitter. Chase says, someone had to. Been surfing VT. Must be weird to see the art unicorn incels draw of you. She says, take your meds and shows that he apparently was posting some weird, like, pregnant of her. Tweet, 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 blah, 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 blah. Soon after this, his link tree was discovered, leading to a personal Facebook with a bunch of personal info. This is a recurring pattern of him having zero self-awareness regarding his horrible OPSEC. Now, obviously, if this was where things ended, he wouldn't deserve a thread, but things continued to get much, much worse. Basically, he got doxxed and people figured out that he was a Satanist dog killer. Pretty disturbing stuff. There's a whole bunch of other shit about him. I might do a video at some point. We can see him being arrested. We see his charges, aggravated DUI, cruelty to animals, driving under revocation. It's a misdemeanor. 64 and 55. What? They arrest you for that? They even charge you with that? That's stupid. No seat belt, 60 and a 50. Operating a moving vehicle in a manner not reasonable. So he, apparently he drives like a retard all the time. And then he got offended, he got charged with cruelty to animals. So this is a mugshot taken in 2000 at age 19. This is him. This is his, 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 his court listing specifically. The dockets are behind paywalls, but it looks like he pled guilty. Here we have... I believe this is a news article. Three men charged in slaying mutilation of dog. This is from November 10th, 2000, from where he's from. Oak, Oak Mulgee, Oak, Oak, Oklahoma, I assume. What a f***ed up name for a place to live. Prosecutors have charged three men with animal cruelty in the October 31st killing and beheading of a dog at a Halloween party. Danny Lyle Smith, 20, and Joshua Ray Cable, 18, both of Oak Mulgee, and Joel, Joel Thomas, that's him, 19, of Morris, were charged Tuesday in Oak Mulgee County District Court with one count of animal cruelty, records indicate. One teenage male arrested in connection with the mutilation 
information hasn't been charged. Smith, Cable, and Thomas, while attending in the concert, mutilated a medium-sized black dog by cutting off its head with a knife, prosecutors allege. Danny Smith allegedly stole the dog from the fenced-in front yard of his mother, Anita Smith, said Jason Spaulding, a detective with the Okmology Police Department. To me, it fits the model of a satanic ritual, Spaulding said. It's unfathomable for kids to do this. These are kids my age, like 19, 20 years old. I'm 20, for those of you guys who don't know. Someone my age beheading a f***ing dog, basically out of high school. Danny Smith is being held in lieu of 50 grand bail at the Okmology County Jail, and Thomas is in custody in lieu of 20 grand bail. Three are scheduled to appear in court next week, the detective said. Danny Smith stole his mother's dog from her yard across the street, Spaulding alleged. The animal was taken into an alley, where Smith cut the dog's throat, and others took turns stabbing and kicking the animal. After the dog was dead, Thomas allegedly cut off its head with a pocket knife, and the animal's body was placed on a fence post. Holy f***ing sh**. So that's the deal on this guy. Apparently he then, he went on Kiwi Farms actually and interacted with people there. A bunch. He says, your site circle jerks about plebit posts and YouTube videos. Maybe go back to Reddit and abandon your forum. Would you rather eat bugs or have them f*** you? It's a pretty deep concept. I believe this is how they doxed him because he posted pictures of where he lives. This is a 40-year-old, by the way, dressing up like Naruto characters. So that's the deal with this guy, Chase. Probably gonna do a video, like I said, at some point. There's just a bunch of cancer going on in the world. There's so many, why are there so many up people, guys? What's going on? We, we need we need, a, we need a shut down. We need a shut down on things. All right, now we do still have one more story I wanna talk about. You guys know who Onision is? He's who we're gonna talk about next. Kind of him, but not really. I'm gonna try to avoid playing his actual content because he is notorious. He's notorious for uh, for taking down people's videos, being a copyright troll. Um, people are making videos about the fact that he's being sued right now. He's being sued for grooming, and the person suing him is also suing YouTube and Google. People are making videos being like, he's about to lose everything, it's gonna be over. I never did a video about it, Repsion did a video. Repsion's was okay, he just kinda just read it and was like, yeah, I hope he gets what he deserves. Obviously, Onision, being an alleged groomer, does deserve some pretty bad stuff. I never did this video, I haven't seen this video. What? If he actually says that he thinks Onision's gonna lose. Onision's being sued and is about to lose everything. I'm gonna Gonna go out on a limb. I'm doing a video about it. I already recorded it, but I'm gonna actually read the whole lawsuit today so you guys can see why I'm so frustrated with it. I think that Regina, the person suing him in the law firm in question, is going to lose. I think they're gonna lose. I think the lawsuit is f***ing stupid. And it's not because I want to defend Onision. It's not because I hate the victim. It's not because I don't believe her. Because she's, she's, I do believe her. And I didn't need to see the lawsuit to think that because there's enough about Onision to, to figure out that he's a f***ed up guy. But the lawsuit is f***ed up specifically in regards to how it relates to Google and YouTube. It relates to Section 230. It relates to like the freedom of the internet. And it's just pretty stupid. It's pretty stupid. What is he, what is he f***ing say in this video? What does I never say? Ladies and gentlemen, in a world where Ohio is seemingly being nuked right now and aliens are pretty much invading planet Earth, I You're not even from the US, you This is not a war, a war, you're not in this world, you. I'm here to kind of make things a little bit easier because you know, it's all a little bit stressful in 2023. Are we all going to perish or have the US government just secretly invaded another country? There's a lot of I think we need to hate British people way more. Questions, ladies and gentlemen, but uh, we're not gonna focus on any of that today. In fact, we're gonna focus on the number one alien that originally came to this planet. Yes, we have actually, but Greg is one of, if not the most spoken about YouTuber in terms of controversy ever. The amount of videos out there about this dude, YouTube should have taken notice and, and, and done something. I know they removed his monetization, but he has, still has a platform. And regardless of mm. if he's making money from it or not, inadvertently, YouTube themselves are making money by having this platform there. It's getting traction. It's getting views. It's still allowing this man to uh, contribute something here. And I, I think YouTube is a great platform, but sometimes I think they need to really think about these things and think, is it really worth allowing this guy to use the platform? You can't say freedom of speech because Greg has his own website. He so this has nothing to do with the freedom of speech. It has nothing to do with that. I don't know what the guy Niber is talking about. Maybe he just made a lazy video. I don't know. Here's an article about it. Neo Nisian lawsuit filed by Regina Alonso for online child sexual exploitation. Two Florida law firms announced earlier today that they have filed a civil lawsuit against YouTubers James Jackson Onision and Lucas Jackson Kai on behalf of Regina Alonso. The lawsuit also names YouTube's parent company, Google. Specifically in the lawsuit, they name YouTube LLC and Google LLC and alleges that the platform participated in the grooming and exploit exploitation of their client by Onision and Kai when Regina was a child. This is a big, a big claim, obviously. This is a big claim to say that YouTube enabled it, allowed it, supported it, profited from it. The Marsh Law Firm and the Habba Law Firm have jointly filed a federal lawsuit against YouTube, James Jackson Onision, and Lucas Jackson, Kai or Laney, on behalf of Regina Alonso. The press release reads, Onision and his spouse openly groomed and exploited Regina when she was a child. So let's read this, law, this, this legal complaint. Let's read this legal complaint. Regina Alonso is the plaintiff versus Google LLC, YouTube LLC, James Jackson, who's Onision, and Lucas Jackson, formerly known as Laney Bot, Laney and Kai, and Kai, Kai is uh, Onision's 
wife, partner. They change their names a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot going on there. I figured we'd we'd read some of the complaint and see uh, see what the deal is. Complaints. This is a civil action for damages against YouTube and his parent company, Google. James Jackson, known online as Onision, and Lucas Jackson, formerly known online as Laneybot, Laney, and Kai under the federal statutes, 18 U.S.C. 1595, Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act, 18 U.S.C. 2255, Civil Remedies for Personal Injuries, and Related State Law Claims Arising from Defendant's Conduct when it granted an agency and or profit-sharing relationship to a predator, Onision, that used YouTube to identify, recruit, solicit, and groom children and coordinated with his spouse, Laney, to lure entice and solicit children for the ultimate goal of engaging in sexual activity with them. This lawsuit will reveal how Google's YouTube partnership program through the YouTube platform enabled, facilitated, and profit shared in the identification and grooming of vulnerable children by two adult predators known as Onision and Laney. Now, I've read through the whole lawsuit, just to let you guys know, and I don't think it does that. I don't think it identifies that. To me, it's not It's not very convincing, to be honest with you. It's not very convincing. It's convincing in the way that Onision and Laney are, are groomers and really f***ed up people, but it's not convincing to me in the way that YouTube is responsible in any way. I can speculate as to their intentions as I do in my video, which will be sort of a more condensed version of this, but I thought today I would read more of the more of the lawsuit, really. Defendant James Jackson, also known as Onision, is a predator who, when faced with the allegations raised against him, began a series of attacks against the victims online in order to intimidate and threaten his victims into silence. Defendant Lucas Jackson, also known as Laneybot, Laney or Kai, is married to James Jackson, also known as Onision, and used new fame as Onision's spouse to lure and entice underage children to engage in sexual acts and exchange CP, abuse material, images with her online. All predators must identify vulnerable individuals that could become their potential victims. Part of ensnaring is a process called grooming, yada, 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 grooming stuff, you know what that is. Here they explain the sort of background of YouTube. They just explain sort of basic stuff behind it, what the YouTube partner program is. Pretty boilerplate stuff. Onision became a famous and popular YouTuber on the platform and became monetized. When a person becomes monetized, YouTube and that person sign off and sign off a YouTube partner program contract, which forms an agency and or profit sharing relationship. Joining the YouTube partner program is optional, but if someone becomes a YouTube partner, Google handles all the advertising placement, revenue collection, and pays the YouTube partner their portion of the profits pursuant to the contract signed. As a member of the program, Google matches the YouTube partner partners videos with advertisers, decides what ads will appear, and keeps track of all traffic, views, as well as ad responses. YouTube then pays the YouTube partner according for their participation in the YouTube partner program. YouTube partners agree to follow and abide by the YouTube terms of service and community guidelines. A YouTube partner that fails to comply with the YouTube terms of service and community guidelines can be demonetized or have their video removed among other penalties. This is not, not, not so dense as of a lawsuit, which I appreciate, I will say. Less extreme on the, on the legal wording. Onision ran several YouTube channels to include but not limited to Onision, Onision Speaks, Uh-Oh Bro, Onision Encore, Onision Archive, Laney Bot, and Cool Guy Kai. Upon information and belief, all these channels were monetized under the YouTube Partner Program. Onision used his fame and platform to objectify children, to form relationships with underage girls, to entice them, groom them, and to arrange transportation across state lines and facilitate further grooming and sexual activity. Onision began pursuing 17-year-old Ta Taylor Anderson, Laney, or Kai, who went by the internet persona of Laneybot. Taylor legally, cha legally changed her name several times and currently goes by the name Lucas Jackson. Here they go on to describe basically the, the course of Onision's like, time on YouTube and stuff like that. They say, YouTube was put on notice many times that Onision was violating the YouTube terms of service and community guidelines, but YouTube took no action to deter or to monetize Onision based on the numerous complaints or violative content he posted. YouTube was receiving value and profit sharing with Onision on violent and harmful content, as well as content used to lure, entice, and recruit underage girls. YouTube continued to allow their partner Onision to post his content, which in turn recruited, lured, and enticed Regina to reach out to Laney through the Onision forums. And this is one of my main contentions with this lawsuit. They claim that YouTube was complicit in it, but the only thing YouTube was complicit in was Onision breaking their community guidelines. They weren't complicit in him doing anything illegal. He actually couldn't even contact them on YouTube. He could only contact them off platform through his forums. On YouTube, he was just making bad videos. His videos were not about sex trafficking. His videos were not about abusing people. His videos were not about... It was not about anything like that. You could say he made videos about... Um, what's her name? And Shiloh, right? Where they had a bad relationship that was abusive. But I, but I believe at that point, Shiloh was of age when those videos were made. And secondly, Onision hadn't been charged with anything legally. In fact, he hasn't to this day been charged with literally anything. He's never been charged with a crime. 
He's never been charged with grooming. He's never gone to jail. Literally none of that has happened. And so for that reason, it's like, I don't know what you can expect YouTube to do. You can claim that maybe they should delete him because of allegations, but that's kind of a dangerous precedent to set because then when people have false allegations and they get their channels deleted, well, they're false allegations. So that's f***ed up. You know, Onision was, was, you know, in my opinion, probably grooming people, but um, he was not doing it on YouTube. He was making YouTube videos that people liked and he would then contact them on his forums, on Instagram, on Twitter and stuff like that. But let's read more into the specifics of the YouTube stuff. Google's YouTube platform, business model, and content moderation policies and practices. YouTube is an online global video sharing and social media platform and was the second most visited site in the world in 2022, only second to Google search. Yada, yada, yada. YouTube has an unprecedented social impact. Much of the activity on YouTube has been monetized and YouTube and Google used most of the data and information YouTube has learned about its users and videos to raise revenue and drive profits. Google monetizes its YouTube platform through both advertising revenue as well as non-advertising. Advertising revenue is derived from YouTube ads and revenue generated on YouTube properties. They talk about how much profits YouTube has received. Let's see here. In order to increase advertising revenue, YouTube has created a platform which allowed any person that wanted to create content on YouTube to have the ability to achieve fame, popularity, and monetization if they meet the eligibility criteria to join the YouTube Partner Program. They talk about becoming a YouTube partner. YouTube partners agree to follow and abide by the YouTube Terms of Service. A YouTube partner that fails to comply can have their video removed, among other penalties. YouTube also recommends content in their algorithm. Not all videos are recommended. Rather, the YouTube algorithm seeks to prioritize videos with high watch time and video performance. Google is, in part, an advertising broker, selling attention to companies that will pay for it. And the longer people stay on YouTube or access this recommended content, the more money YouTube and its parent companies make. Google has the ability to, and in fact has, demonetized some of the YouTube partners in the past for violating the YouTube terms of service and community guidelines. Platforms like YouTube have learned that outrageous, tortious, and divisive content drives users and profits. YouTube's recommendation system is responsible for generating the majority of all user viewing time on the platform, and much of the most interactive with materials involve controversial, intense, violent, and extreme views. So this is where they kind of get into the idea that YouTube promotes controversial content and benefits from it, which, I mean, YouTube benefits from all content, so obviously controversial content is one of the things that they would benefit from. From. Defendant YouTube pays its YouTube partners to create content because it's benefited from increased user activity. A former Google executive was quoted in the Wall Street Journal saying, There's this idea that the search algorithm is all neutral. It comes the web and shows what it found, but it's total BS. More than 70% of the videos watched on YouTube are videos recommended by YouTube's non-neutral algorithm in an effort to drive user engagement and therefore advertising profits. This is where the actual damning allegations come in. And they, they say some things, but they don't, in my opinion, really validate them with anything. They say YouTube allows partners to monetize their platforms on its product to generate revenue for itself and its users users, including YouTube partners that violate the community guidelines and laws prohibiting the sexual exploitation of children. The problem with this is that alleging this, YouTube has no proof, you know, in the legal sense, at least, that Onision did anything. They have screenshots on Twitter. They have allegations. They don't have proof of anything um, in a legal sense. And so I don't think that YouTube has any responsibility to have removed him from the platform at any point or stopped anything. YouTube's product was built to promote hateful, harmful, and controversial content as it's most engaging to users, including its minor users. And here they link a bunch of f***ing stupid articles about how YouTube, like, promotes hate. Stuff about, like, the alt-right pipeline. Just, like, stupid It doesn't matter. And the allegation here is basically that YouTube allowed Onision to exist. Therefore, they share in the responsibility of people being groomed by him, even if off-platform. And the thing you may bring up... In response to this is, okay, well, what about Section 230? Section 230, for those of you guys who don't know, is basically a provision that a lot of people talk about in regards to free speech that basically says that websites are not responsible for the content posted by their users, right? Because how could you allege that? How could YouTube be responsible for all the content posted by its users, given the fact that so many people upload to YouTube, you know? Something like 30, 20 or 30,000 hours of content are uploaded to YouTube per minute. How could any anyone possibly review all of that? So it basically recognizes that you can't hold websites responsible, these huge websites. You can't hold these websites responsible for the content posted. It's impossible. It's, 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 it's totally unrealistic. The internet would not exist if that was the case. So the allegation is that YouTube was complicit for no reason other than the fact that they had Onision on their platform, which is stupid. YouTube has employed a tiered revenue sharing, yada, yada, yada. Some YouTube partners have used their YouTube platform in a profit sharing partnership to facilitate sex trafficking and build a pool of children from which to select from and groom their next victim within. YouTube actively monitors where it appears in the news and sends a daily email to its employees detailing this coverage. This has been referred to by the moniker the nightmare fuel. And for those of you guys, you guys who don't know, Onision is demonetized on YouTube but not removed. And the allegation here is basically alleging that because they didn't delete his channel, they allowed grooming to happen, they facilitated it, and therefore they should be held legally responsible. The plaintiff here is 
asking for 150 grand to recoup legal fees in addition to whatever the court deems fair, which could be any amount. Here they talk about just Onision becoming famous or whatever, yada, 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 yada. They talk about how he groomed her, which as far as I'm concerned is probably real. Where do they talk about section 230? Here we go. I just referenced this. Nearly three decades ago, Congress passed the Communications Decency Act of 1996, which included section 230 or CDA 230. Congress intended the CDA of 1996 would accomplish several things to include promoting the free exchange of information and ideas over the internet and to encourage voluntary monitoring for offensive or obscene material. Since this passage, the internet has grown and is no longer a fragile new means of communication. In 2018, Congress passed a bill known as Fight Online Sex Trafficking, in which Congress clarified that CDA 230 was never intended to offer an immunity or liability shield for criminal conduct, such as sex trafficking, prostitution, or the exploitation of children that occurred through online platforms. So basically they're saying here that, you know, Section 230, which is what I said, would give YouTube immunity, is not applicable here because of FOSTA. FOSTA being an act from 2018 designed to, uh, then to prevent online sex trafficking. FOSTA is basically an act to stop sex trafficking, child prostitution, stuff like that online. And it allows you to hold websites responsible if they allow that stuff. But one of the things that I read is important is intent. The bill amends the federal criminal code to define a phrase related to the prohibition on sex trafficking. Currently, it's a crime to knowingly benefit and does say knowingly benefit from participation in a venture that engages in sex trafficking. This bill defines participation in a venture to mean knowingly assisting, supporting, or facilitating a sex trafficking violation, which would mean that YouTube would have to know and that's key, know that sex trafficking or child exploitation is going on for them to be held legally responsible. This document alleges that they knew because a few journalists contacted YouTube employees, right? This this legal complaint alleges that they knew because a few journalists messaged YouTube and were like, hey, look at this f***ed up stuff that Onision is allegedly doing. The problem with this is that they are allegations. Once again, they are allegations. In my opinion, those allegations are valid and Regina was groomed. But also, in my opinion, and I suspect in the opinion of the law, this lawsuit is f***ing stupid. It's retarded because... YouTube was not complicit in anything. Should they have deleted his channel like they did with someone like EDP445? EDP's never been charged. Should they have deleted him? Yes, I agree. They should have deleted Onision, but they have no legal responsibility to. The only thing they have a responsibility to do is run their own website how they see fit based on the community guidelines. They did demonetize him based on the community guidelines for allegations because there was a bunch of going on. They didn't delete him though because they didn't know what was going on. So I don't think Google was even, I don't think Google or YouTube was even negligent. I don't think they did anything wrong. Onision did. He should be in this lawsuit. Yeah, I think that's lawsuit is going to fail because they're trying to allege that Google and YouTube were complicit in this or, or helped it in some way. And they also claim they profit shared, which they never, they never accurately outline in my opinion. They basically just say like, oh, well, they made money from his videos and he groomed people. Therefore, they profited in grooming. But his content had nothing to do with grooming. If you go to the Onision channel, there's there's nothing. He didn't make videos like Mr. Girl does being like, I'm a file and here's why. It wasn't like that. You know what I mean? He just made videos on YouTube. You know, you, you need a really good case to sue someone like Google. And this is kind of a conflicting thing for me because obviously I want Onision to be sued. I think he deserves it. But I don't want Google to be sued because they could have negative implications about the future of the internet. I don't think Google should be held responsible for things that people who use their platform do. Now, if, if Onision was on YouTube and he was grooming people on YouTube, that's one thing, right? If he was messaging them with like YouTube Messenger being like, I'm gonna f*** you because you're a kid, that would be f***ed up. But even to that, I wouldn't say that YouTube should be responsible because YouTube is not the ones who groomed anyone. YouTube runs such a massive platform, there's no way they could police everything. There used to be a YouTube Messenger. They did remove that feature before any of this happened, I believe. I'm just saying, like, if you wanted to make the argument, playing, uh, you know, devil's advocate, Regina's advocate, whatever you want to call it, you know, there, there's some compelling evidence in, in here against Onision and Laney, undoubtedly, for how they groom people, but YouTube is not responsible. YouTube had nothing to do with it. And for that reason, you know, I don't think this lawsuit's going to work out, honestly. I just don't.